Hello everyone. Welcome to another Incarnate live stream. My name is Mati and today we're going to be showing you how to create shipyards or dockyards. Now some of you might ask what is the difference between a shipyard and a dockyard? Well, the two are pretty interchangeable, but there is a slight difference between a shipyard and a dockyard. A shipyard is where you would generally construct a ship before you set it into the water. And a dockyard is specifically for just porting ships or boats. It's not necessarily uh, the same thing, but they are fairly interchangeable if you want to know the difference between a shipyard and a dockyard. So welcome, everybody. I'm excited to show you how to make shipyards or a dockyard. We're going to be using the fantasy battle map style. And we're going to be uh, showing you all the tricks that you need to know to put together, to construct docks, where to put the boats, the proper scale, everything that you need to know to put this together. Now I'm going to wait just a few moments for people to kind of fill in. I don't really have any announcements uh, at, at this moment. Probably a little bit later, though, we can go over the stream calendar for this month or next month, which starts tomorrow. And of course, also, uh, we'll be doing some changes to the schedule. We'll be changing the schedule from stream starting at 10 a.m. PST on Wednesdays to 3 p.m. PST. So there will be a schedule change. Of course, all videos will be uploaded to YouTube that exact same day. It generally takes about two hours or so, so you'll expect that. All right, so let's just wait just a couple more seconds, let people filter in. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Glad to see you here. Okay. Let's go ahead and start with the first steps. Now, when it comes to creating a shipyard or a dockyard or just really any battle map, you're going to have to first set scale. Scale is really, really important. It'll be hard to know how big your staircases are, how big your boat, your ship, how big crates, barrels, and things like that will be if you don't first set scale. So scale is super important. So what I like to do is I go over to the grid tool and I go ahead and turn that grid on. Now I've set the grid to a different size. The default is like 40, I believe is 40, 30, but I'm gonna set it to 20 by 15, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and delete this right here and I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So in basic battle maps, your scale, your grid is gonna be five by five or five square feet, okay? So <clears throat> setting the scale right away, so I went up here and put five feet right inside of this cell right here to show you that one square equals five square feet in the imperial system. So this is pretty basic stuff, five square feet. Now we go back to that grid real quick and we can see that there are 20 columns going across and there are 15 columns going down. So some basic arithmetic, 20 times five is 100 feet. So it's 100 feet across and 15 times five is 75, so 75 feet going down. That's fairly a large amount of room. So 100, by, 100 feet by 75 feet is a decent size. And of course, you can always rescale with the, or resize with the resize tool. But for now, this is what we're gonna stick with. So we got our five, five square feet in that cell. This represents 100 feet across, 75 feet going down, okay? So now, once we've set the scale, I like to put the grid all the way down to negative five layers. So it's not really in the way or anything like that. So if I put a stamp down, it'll be right on top of that. Now, once you've set the scale, now it's time to make the landscape. So I've made your default for the canvas is gonna be the BG layer. So if I go down right here and I put on the add mode of the mask tool and I go across like this, you'll notice that the add mode shows up right here because this is the BG layer. So just remember that anything made with the add mode of the mask tool is the FG layer, the foreground, and anything made with the subtract mode of the mask tool is going to be uh, the BG layer, okay? So your default for the canvas, the whole thing will be the BG layer, all right? So what I like to do is to make a little bit of a sketch to help me figure out how I want it to look. So I'm just gonna use the path tool to kind of just make a slight sketch. I'm gonna take the path all the way down to negative five. And instead of going perfectly straight, like, like this, I'm gonna add a little bit of curvature to break up those straight lines. So what I'll end up doing 
instead is making a curvature. Now what the guide that I'm making right now is where the land's gonna be. So I'm just gonna go like this. And the great thing about using a path is I can move it. So if it's not wide enough, because remember this is five feet, so five, 10, 15, 20, 25. This is technically 30 feet wide where, where this land is gonna be. It's gotta be enough space to maybe add maybe some shops that are lined along the dockyard or shipyard. You also wanna consider maybe some markets. And of course, there's gotta be enough room on the main thoroughway for carts to go both ways. So about 10 to 15 feet wide, Road should be wide enough for two carts to go side by side coming and going from the docks, right? So I'll go ahead and push this out just a little bit more so we have enough room. Okay, so there's that sketch. This is where that land's going to be. I'm just using curve, a curvature instead of a straight line because it just looks more interesting. But it's not so curved that your players can't walk in those areas where the grid's at. So it's always good to have just a little bit of curvature on your map and not everything's a perfectly straight line. And then from there, we can also decide where we, where we want docks to be, where we want ships to be, and where we want kind of our shops to be. So let's keep going with our, our paths. So I might wanna consider maybe adding a dock right here and a dock right here. I'll do that real quick. And a dock right here. This is obviously where a ship might be this could be like where the main dock is right here and we can maybe put some buildings over here i think might look good over here we'll see copy paste and let's maybe go off screen a little bit and then put in one more now remember it's just a sketch so if it doesn't look good don't worry about it that's okay it doesn't have to be Perfect. The sketch is just there to help you, to give you an idea, because the hardest part when making any kind of map is the starting out, right? So the sketch is to help you come up with a visual so that you don't really feel discouraged, right? Because you at least you have something there. And remember, it's just a sketch, so you're going to end up deleting it eventually. It's there as a guide to help you out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select all the paths, and I'm going to group it. And then I'm gonna rename the group with that pencil. It says rename, and I'm just gonna call it sketch. Okay, and I'm gonna drop the opacity down so it's not too overpowering. And I'm gonna lock the sketch. This will basically lock this whole thing so I won't accidentally select it. Now the only way to make sure that you can select it is to do it right here in that right panel. Just click sketch and you'll be able to move it around now once it's selected. So you can only select locked items when they're in the right panel. But if you were to do it with the select tool on the canvas, you can't. So just kind of keep that in mind. So now that we have that sketch, we can go in and create the wall or a retaining wall that's going to keep the land in and the water, the ocean out. So it's nice to pick some wall choices that we want. I'm just going to go into my favorites here. I have, should have a couple. I have this nice wall right here. Now keep in mind that, remember, that this is five square feet. So if I put this down like this, this is gonna be mm, almost about a foot and a half wide, maybe a little bit larger. So just remember, it has to be just wide enough and strong enough and sturdy enough to hold the ocean back, okay? Now we're gonna take a couple of these and we're going to piece a couple together to try to create a curvature. Now, if people struggle with curvatures and maps, I'll show you an interesting trick to make them. Now, for starters, right now, I'm kind of using this longer piece right here. If you wanted more subtle and more smoother curves, you would add more pieces. But because, but because um, it takes a little while to put those together, we're just going to use these larger pieces. But I will show you the trick to making curvatures. I had saw some people in the Discord who were struggling with how to do kind of circular shapes. And I can kind of show you how to put that together a little bit. But first, let's just go ahead and make the main wall part. The ocean waves are lapping against this wall right here. Okay. Now I'm also going to select the whole thing and I'm going to change the shadow, the shadow is set to layer. I'm gonna change the layer shadows now. I'm gonna push it this way. And the reason why I wanna push it this way is because the objective is to show height and depth. This is technically a wall that's above the ocean waves. So it has to be tall enough 
to where a dock can be built aside it, alongside it, and so that it to show that there's depth, you're going to always going to use contrast or shadows. Now this shadow might be a little too dark. You can change the intensity to where you see fit. But adding in that shadow is what's going to make it look like there's some depth there. Let me step away a little bit. And if you take a look at it, you can see that the shadow is on this side. So this part is higher up than or the left side is higher up than the right side. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and f use the mask tool, the add mode of the mask tool. And I'm going to fill in the entire left side. Because this is going to be where our land is at. And we're going to put shops, maybe just one or two shops. Hello, welcome Savitz. Glad that you are here. Sweet, more people the better. Love it. Okay. I'm just going to fill this in. Okay, we're almost there. All right. So this is our land part right here on the left, and the water is on the right. Well, well I'm glad that you're here. Sorry to interrupt your map making process. All right, so the land, the water is already kind of the texture I want. I might want to consider texturing in this left side real quick. I'm just going to throw in uh, some cobble because I like the cobblestone. That looks nice. And I'll go ahead and set to the FG layer because I want to paint on that layer. I'm going to turn softness off for now. I'm just going to fill in this whole area with some stone. Now, always remember that when you change the scale, you are going to remember you're going to have to also change the scale of the textures to match. Hey, first time chatter. Niles, welcome. Glad that you are here. Wonderful. Whew. Last day of hot weather. Glad to hear that. Hope it cools off. All right, so now we have our land on the left, right, and on the right side, we have our boat or water area. So next, I want to probably put down some docks, right? That'd be a good idea. So I can go back into that stamp options right here. I've got a dock already set for myself right here. Now, this is a huge dock. It's about 10 feet wide. So if you want, you can scale it down. It's up to you, right? So we still have that grid up, right? That grid is up and that's what's helping us. So when we look at this piece, it's very clear that this is 10 by 10 feet, maybe just slightly wider, maybe a, maybe 11 feet wide if you include uh, the posts going down. Now, if you want, you can make the docks not quite as large. You can scale them down if you want. It's up to you. Hey, first time chat, log break. Welcome, just making a shipyard, awesome. Cool, well come join us with this one. All right, so now I think that this is pretty good size right here. I think this works good because 10 feet by 10 feet is wide enough for a cart to go on, for two people to walk side by side, enough room to put crates down, enough to hold perhaps a crane. So I think about 10 by 10 feet for a dock is going to work just fine. Probably wider than a normal dock, but this is a shipyard and there's probably going to be a lot of commerce and there's going to be a lot of mercantile stuff going on. So it's nice to have large enough docks for that to work out. So I'm going to place it right against the wall right here like this. And you can, you have several options you can choose from. You can put them the dockyard below the wall or you can put it on top. It's up to you. I don't really have a preference. I'm going to put it right up against so it's not necessarily on top. So a little bit of water is going to show on the side. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. And all you're going to do is just paste a couple together. And you might have to rotate just a little bit. And the way that I try to make sure that it looks right when I rotate is just to line up the posts. So look carefully when I put this down. I line up the dock posts carefully. I can go ahead and copy and paste the two. So I select both, copy, paste, and then rotate this even more. Put this up right here and then line up the posts. Copy, paste, do it again. And we're going to have this dock go all the way across the entire thoroughway or walkway on the left side. Okay, let's go and put this down. Remember, just line up those posts on the dock, okay? Because if they don't line up, it might look weird if you've got like a double post. You see how that looks kind of odd? So you just have to line them up right. So they fit well together. Now I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste a whole bunch of them like this. This should be enough. If I select all these, copy, paste, put them all down, and then rotate. 
So you want to do less work instead of more work. So instead of putting each one individually down, once you put a couple down, then you can start copying and pasting them. That will be less work for you, okay? Because I know that you, not everyone has all the time in the world to just sit around and make maps all day. Okay. And I've even set these docks to the layer uh, shadow. So they're casting a shadow in that direction as well, which also shows that the docks are above the water, right? So remember, the trick to depth is ambient occlusion or shadows, all right? That technically, really, the real trick is just contrast. If you want something to pop out more, it needs a darker shadow or outline for it to pop out, okay? That's always the trick with shadows. So now that we've applied the, the docks out here, we can go ahead and put a ship down. So let's go ahead and pick. Now we might have to rescale the ship because ships are utterly massive. Let that load for a second. It's really, really big. So this ship is utterly massive, but that's okay. We can scale it back down just a little bit and then we can take a look because this is a pretty big ship. We can scale it down just a little bit more. And we're gonna be doing a resize later because you're gonna end up resizing quite a bit. And there's nothing wrong with using the resize tool because sometimes the layout isn't perfect for you. Sometimes you may be like, well, I wanna add more boats or I wanna add more dock. I don't wanna add more land. Don't give yourself more work. Just make the basic layout first. And if it's not suiting you, you can resize it and then start adding to it. That's the beauty of that resize tool. So I'll go ahead and put the boat down and then from there I can decide where the docks are coming out. So I'm going to take, go back to this dock right here, select it. And what I'll do is I'll put a dock going across like this. So I'll put it right there. That should do good. And I'll just place a bunch of them going across. Uh, I actually don't know. Is there Cheryl? I have to ask. Let's go ahead and put this dock down. Oopsie, I'm gonna flip these around because I don't want it to be exactly the same. So let's go ahead and rotate one more this way, push it out further. We'll end up resizing the map, of course. Okay, I think that looks okay. And then you can even maybe add another one right here like this, going this way, and we'll rotate it a little bit. It's nice to always, to try to create just a little bit of different angles perfectly straight angles that line up perfectly with the grid. That may be easier for the grid to line up, but at the same time, it looks a little bit different. I honestly like to throw off a little bit, not go perfectly straight with the grid. It's always nice to add some curvature in your maps. You see, there's not a lot of curvature. This curvature isn't so ridiculous that it isn't completely wacky with the grid. So you can still walk on this dock part with your characters because they're also wide enough with those five feet squares. So there's enough room to walk around and move around on the dock, okay? So you wanna make sure there's enough room for players to move around. So that should work and we'll rescale again. We'll rescale the whole or resize the map shortly. So now that we've added all that stuff in, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in ways to get onto the dock. So it might not be a bad idea to maybe just throw on a staircase or something like that. So I'll just go into the catalog and throw in a staircase, a wooden one might work fine. Or actually what might even work better is maybe some kind of ramp. Because if there's gonna be uh, carts going on and off the dock from loading off of a boat, maybe a ramp would work best. So here's where a dock is right here. So let's just take a table and use it as a ramp. I'll go ahead and rotate it like this. And of course, the longer the ramp is, the higher up, or the longer the ramp, the ramp is widthwise or lengthwise, what that generally means is, is that the pitch isn't quite as strong. So if I was to go back over to the advanced settings and I wanted to show that this was higher up, then I'd want to change the width of it like this. Okay, so now this makes it look like the dockyards are higher up. All right, I'm not gonna do that. I wanna make the pitch or the angle just a little bit more like this, okay? And I'm gonna change the brightness just a little bit on this one, just so it kind of matches because it's so bright in comparison to those docks. So I'm bring that down. So this is kind of one place. We can also add another ramp over here to, uh, to this side if you want, that's up to you. If not, just throw down some stairs or maybe they just jump off the wall onto the dock, okay? I'm also going to move the shadow 
You notice how the shadow right here on this one looks a little weird. So what I'll do is I'll change that object shadow. Go to zero. I'm going to move the shadow a little bit more this way and not on the dock part. There we go. So now there's no shadow on the right side. Okay. Oh, it's a little too dark too. I'll change that. Excuse me, the intensity just a little bit. Okay. So we've got some basic stuff here. We've got the boat. We've got a single dock here. Another dock here for maybe smaller boats to come onto. The smaller boats can also go right here. Next, let's go ahead and just add all the largest objects. We've done a little bit of this side. Let's go over to the left where the land is and let's add in some buildings, okay? Now let me check the scale here. About 100%. Let's check how big the buildings are at 100% and we'll also have to size them up against the grid. So let's take a look. Wait for it to load. So this is a very, very large building. We can bring the size down, I think, just a little bit. Let's see how big this building is. That building is a good size. That'll work just fine. I'm going to place it right here like this. I'm going to rotate it just a little bit so it is somewhat parallel to that wall there. I'm going to throw in one more. Put one right here. Okay. All right. Oh, great. Love that information, Rogue13. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Much appreciate. Yep. A dockyard is specifically more where you construct ships. Or, I'm sorry, a shipyard is where you construct ships. A dockyard is where they port. But they do have similarities. So the only real difference is that a shipyard is where you would create one. While a dockyard, you would uh, just port ships. So this is set to layer. I'm going to change this to object. Remember, I want to show this idea of height. So I'm going to use that ambient inclusion, 0, 0. Increase the blur size, uh, intensity here. There we go. Let's push it out a little bit more. I really want it to pop out. There we go. That looks nice. And then also I have to factor in where the light is coming from. So the light, if the light is coming from the right side, then I would recommend putting the light side of the buildings on the right side. So it looks like it's hitting that. If you want the light to be coming from uh, the left side, then you probably want to flip it around and want the shadows to be facing uh, towards the dockyard. So it's up to you which way, because what we've done with the roofs is added a shadow side and a light side. And it's just so that it creates depth, because if it's there is no light and dark side, these buildings would be rather flat. So I'll just throw down two buildings for now. I'm totally going to resize the whole thing. But for now, I'll put it down like this. It fits. Thank you again, Rogue13, by the way. Appreciate that. Love it. Let's go ahead and take a step back here. Put the ramp a little further up, I think. And I think I will transform it just a bit. There we go. I just want to make sure there's enough room for carts and things to come through here. Let's go ahead and do this. There we go. Let me take a step back. I think overall this looks just fine. We've got some buildings here. There's enough room on this thoroughway here for carts to go in and out. So a great thing now to do to verify that that's true is to go in and find a cart, of course, and put it down and then we can verify. Thank goodness we have that grid up because that is helping us to understand the scale. So that's super important. Let me go ahead and put an empty cart down for now and we can take a look at it. Let's go ahead and zoom in and put it next to a grid cell so we can take a look at it. So technically this is about roughly about five, five feet wide. Okay. And I'm a little short of 10 feet, 10 feet long. I'm going to go ahead and push this up a layer. I'm also going to put it on top of the dock so we can kind of get a good idea of the scaling and I'll copy and paste and put another one on the road as well. And I'm going to, Select both of these, and if you're having a hard time select, I just go to the select option in the hamburger menu, select all from this set. It will select all the, the wheelbarrows here. I'm going to change the object shadows. Now there are a couple ways to approach shadows, and really the easiest thing to do if you're kind of new to mapping and you or might struggle with shadows, the best type of things to do with shadows is just to have a shadow that's just right beneath it, that that just means that the sun is directly 
above. And that's the easiest way to go about dealing with your shadows. Now, if you wanted to show elongated shadows or projected shadows from a light source, that's a little bit more difficult. And so we'll have to share, save that for a, another stream, okay? All right, so now that we've added in a cart to kind of give us the width of our walkway or quay, we also want to uh, go ahead and also look at how, how wide our dock is. So there's enough room for people, enough room for a horse to go down this, go down the ramp, rotate, and then kind of go down the main walkway, okay? All right, I'll go ahead and put that back. That'll do just fine. Let's put this maybe over here on this side and the loading can be done on the other side. Now we also wanna add in a couple other things like we wanna add markets and details like barrels and crates. We're at 98 changes, let's save and then we'll go ahead and throw down the markets. I'm gonna quickly save. Feel free if you have any questions to ask Cheryl or myself. Awesome. We're going to finish saving and we'll go put down those markets and we're going to be very strategic about our markets. We don't want them to get in the way of access to the dock. We don't want them to uh, be just floating anywhere and we want to make sure there's enough room for your wheelbarrows or your carts to come through. Okay. All right. Almost finished saving here. Awesome. I'm looking forward to resizing it because it's always nice to add maybe a little bit. Uh, is there a limit on how many objects on a map has? Uh, no, there is not a limit, though the more that you have, the definitely uh, a little bit more lag you might experience because there's just so much information on the map. Just make sure to save and refresh from time to time. Okay. And, and hello, by the way, Faithbringer. Glad that you are here with us. First time chatter. Awesome. All right, saving is a, a little slow. <laughs> Let that pop up. Just one second here. Drink some water, fall asleep. Uh, take a little power nap while waiting for it to save. Ah, we have something. Yes, we are good to go. <laughs> All right. So some fun things that I wanted to throw in here. I wanted to throw... Uh, your characters to go into some back alleyways behind the buildings, maybe put a ladder on top of the roofs because I want to make, when I think of a battle map, I want to make it as kind of as fun as possible for your players to be able to move around, take advantage of height, because really what makes a dynamic battle map is really allowing the characters to both explore maneuverability and height differences that can add changes to your attacks, all kinds of things, longer distance for arrows, makes it more interesting to have an, a battle that's taking place both on the dock, the ship, in the water, on the land, on top of the roofs, or in the or in the back alleyways. Okay, let me go ahead and now that we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and resize it. If you don't know where the resize option is, it's right here in the grid option, or you can go to that hamburger menu in the top left-hand corner and go resize map from new region. I'm gonna go ahead and resize this I want to make it just a little bit bigger to include maybe the entire ship as well as maybe some back alley areas. So let's go ahead and go this big. I want to catch that whole building there. And I think this should be wide enough as well. Now, when you're moving it around, you'll notice it will show you the pixel dimensions when you click, hold, and drag. So you'll be able to see how wide it is. I'm going to go ahead and confirm this. Click off this toggle. I don't want any objects that are off the map or outside of the boundaries to be deleted. I'm going to go ahead and save and proceed. What it's going to do is it's going to save this current map and then just create a new map or clone with the resized dimensions, okay? So I'll quickly let that load up and then we'll continue adding further to it. We have about 30 minutes left. That should be enough time to add in all the little extra stuff. Let's go ahead and load those images. It's gonna come up. And then we're gonna push the buildings a little bit more to the left, further inward, so that we have enough room for our markets to fit in. And of course, I want some back alley space as well. Okay, so the modifications have happened. Now you're gonna to have to make some changes and stuff like this. We're gonna go with that add mode of the mask tool. 
and I'm going to make sure uh, I'm going to first extend the wall here some minor changes here let's extend the wall wall is extended there let's also extend the wall here copy paste okay now that we've extended the wall there we can put those together let's go ahead and push these a little further back now because I want to make alleyways I'm gonna make them fairly small let's go in also and fill in the parts so I'll go ahead and add with the add mode here and make sure I fill in the whole space okay and there we go all right looking good so we've expanded it a bit so now we've created room for all kinds of stuff which is what exactly what we wanted okay i think everything looks good all right now let's take a look at how much room in the back here this looks right let's also throw down a little bit more cobble in with the fg layer and we're going to make sure this whole thing is covered with cobble there we go all right this looks good to me there we go okay Oop, i'm not sure what that is there we go now that's filled up oh i missed a question here do you find when grouping items saves saves uh, go faster yes i do actually and actually we're going to be doing a stream next week next week next wednesday 3 p.m on groups so I'm really excited about that because a lot of people are confused on how, how groups operate and how to make your own custom or composite stamps within a group. So I'll be covering that next week. So go check that out. Super cool, right? I'm excited about that. All right. So now that we've kind of filled that in there, oopsie, it looks like I also need to uh, paint in the background as well, the BG layer. So I'll go ahead and fill that in as well. Oopsie, missed some spots. My bad. In fact, I'm not going to paint it in that way. I'm going to go ahead and just use my quick fill cheat which i just go all the way across like this set it to bg press enter it's going to fill up the entire bg with that color or texture all right okay so i've made enough room for uh the sh you can see the ship maybe some other little boats coming in i've expanded it just enough so there's tons of room okay and now i'm going to go ahead and put down those markets and i'm also going to delete my sketch since we've got most things up now i can just go ahead and delete that sketch I don't need it anymore. Boom, sketch, gone. So I don't really need that. And I might want to even consider extending the dock a little further up. Okay. Let's go ahead and put that down. Remember, just line up those posts, okay? So that way it won't look odd. Okay. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and play around a little bit more with a, a kind of a back alley space. So there isn't going to be a whole lot of feet. There aren't going to be more than maybe about five or seven feet to work with in that back alleyway that's going to be behind there. But it works great for maybe you have some kind of you're meeting a thief. There's a meeting going on or a very close bottlenecked battle going on. Or maybe there's a hidden chest back there. It's just to give a tight space that kind of creates that claustrophobia. Works great for combat. It's challenging because when you have a bottleneck like that, only one character, the person in front, wherever the, the enemy is, can attack. So it creates this kind of empty space that make or a close space that makes it more challenging for combat. Let's go ahead and push this back. I'm also going to line up these a little bit to where there's exactly five feet of space. So I'll push this down a little bit more and there's about about that looks right. So there's going to be a little alleyway that goes through. And what I want to do is maybe put down some stairs to make it look like there's some depth because sometimes it's nice to show some height and depth. Now, for what I understand, most staircases, pretty standard, are about five by five feet. So I'll just go ahead and put that down about that size. It works just fine. I'm going to turn off the shadow. I don't really need it on for this object. If you want to make it exactly five feet, you can. I'll just scale it down a little bit more. And that's about five feet right there. I'm going to turn off that layer shadow. And I'm going to put a staircase in. Make it set it below like this so I can catch those shadows. And this staircase makes it look like you're going up a level. So that's where the alleys are behind the buildings and a little higher up. So you walk across, you go up these stairs, and boom, into this little back alley area. Okay, that's perfect. 
And we can do the same thing here. Oops, I just noticed that that has some land there. We're gonna add there. All right. Okay, so now you've got that back alley space. Let's go ahead and throw in our market stalls. So I got market stalls right here. And I'm gonna put them probably just right along the dock here. I'm also gonna change the object shadows. Let me do change those settings first before placing it. So I'll select it, go to object shadows. We're just gonna do the shadow is just straight top down because it's just a heck of a lot easier to work with than elongated or projected shadows on different times of the day. Let's increase the intensity so it's very clear that this tent is higher up. So just adding a little bit of that ambient occlusion, some dark shadow, makes it look like it pops up. So if I place this down like this, you'll notice that there's a shadow underneath it, which makes it look like it pops out, okay? So I'm gonna go and just put it right here. A part of it is constructed on the dock because there are two sides. Maybe you want to buy goods on one side on the dock side, and you wanna buy some goods on the street side. Okay, so I can put one there. Now I can go in and throw some more. So let's put maybe another one right here like this, we'll go ahead and rotate it. Okay, let's go ahead and throw in a couple more, I think would look good. We've already got one of those, not use that one. Uh, let's do the same one right here. This blue, flat color blue instead of that. And I might even wanna push this back a little bit more right here because there's still not a whole lot of room for a cart to go through. So let me go ahead and just place these carts. Yep, there's enough room for two carts to come through here. Perfect. All right, let's keep adding a couple more of these markets in here. Maybe we could put some alongside uh, the building here. So maybe this is like both a person's house, but also where they sell their wares at. You can put another one right here if you want. Just make sure it's below. And also because there's supposed to be some shadow Right here, remember when you're using layer shadows, it doesn't, when you're using like a layer shadow, you don't, you can't see the shadow on top of another stamp. Because this is set to an object, the shadow shows up on the stamp. Okay, put that there, put another one right here. So there's some shops and stuff going on right here. That's perfect. All right, let's just go ahead and just add a couple more little markets I think would be kind of nice. Let's put one right here and let's put it on top, of course, because. There we go. And then I think maybe one more. Let's take a look. I think we can fit one more. Yeah. Let's go with this kind of rickety one right here. This will work just fine. we will put that right there. Okay. Let's rotate it. Face it this way. Okay. Now that you've added some markets in, let's maybe just keep working a little bit more on this space right here. Why don't we throw in a ladder? Because we want some players to maybe go onto the rooftops and enjoy... Uh, maybe do some combat on the roofs. Maybe you want to push the bandit or push an enemy off the roof and they do damage from falling down, right? So great, great place to add some combat. Let's go ahead and add in a ladder. Let's maybe put it on top right here. So you get, you climb up the ladder right here. And maybe we can even add in uh, maybe a piece of wood that you walk across to get to the other roof. Yeah, it's always fun, right? Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And we can put it across maybe like this if you want. So you can go right across from there. And let's change the shadow to object. There we go. And I'll go ahead and just center them. So just go with zero, zero. And I'm going to increase the intensity. There we go. There's a little bit of shadow on top. There we go. So you can go up right here, do some combat on top right here, or you can go up and go to across this board right here and continue your combat onto the next roof. So kind of a nice setup there. So now you have lots of places that you can have your, your combat, whether it's on the dock, the water, the ship, the back alleyway, super important because you just want to create that kind of diversity. You want to have that kind of fun stuff because what makes a dynamic battle map, like I said before, is just giving your players more options, height differential, having obstacles, being able to jump on top of something, jump on top of someone. Dynamic combat means dynamic landscape or dynamic kind of structures to work with and move around, okay? 
Now, once I've done all this stuff, I've kind of added in the basics, right? I've added in the building here. I've added in this stuff. I might want to consider adding a couple more things. So one other thing I could do is create another retaining wall. And I'm just going to drop it down a layer because this is higher up right here. What is there a slope going up? No, there isn't. So we can put another retaining wall right here. Copy, paste, put another one right here. And so that kind of creates the illusion of a second level. Okay, so you actually have three different levels going on here. The back alleyway is the highest point on the map. Well, actually not the highest point, but for ground, it's the highest point. Really the highest point would be uh, these buildings here. But you have like a three, like three tiers here. On the left, the alleyway is the highest point uh, for the ground. You have a second tier right here leading to the dock, and the dock is higher up than the water itself, okay? So lots of different options that you can kind of work with here. Okay, let's go ahead and change uh, these to our object layer as well. I'm gonna make these a little bit more defined so that you can show that there's some height. So let's move the shadow this way. There we go. And of course, by moving that shadow that way, what am I doing? I'm creating the illusion of depth, right? So this part right here is a little bit lower. That center part is lower than the left part, right? That way you can't miss it. Easy to figure out. Okay. 64 changes. I think we can go ahead and save. And we'll go ahead and throw in that next part. Now, remember that you, this is a clone, a rescale, resize clone from my original dockyard. So we'll have you rename the ship. And I'm just going to call this keep because I'm going to delete the old one. So keep. And we're going to save this. And then we're going to go in and throw on that next step, which is a lot of details. Details are super fun. So we'll get to that. So we'll let this save and we'll move on. All right. Don't forget, if you have any questions, feel free to ask Cheryl or myself. Yes, Doggy Crimson, rooftop chases are fun as heck. I absolutely love it. In fact, it might even be more interesting to not put the uh, stip, not put the ladder where uh, the main walkway is, but maybe putting the ladder on the back alleyway side. So that way you literally have to get to the alleyway because I don't want to put all, make it all, make the access to all these points on this main thoroughway. It make your, make your players do a little bit more work. Maybe they have to go into the alleyway where an ambush is to get to the roof to where maybe something important is, right? All just depends. So think about those things. So I will move that ladder to the alleyway and then that way, maybe it's set up for an ambush or whatever it is you want to happen back there. Maybe you bump into a fortune teller who tells you something grim. Maybe you bump into a thief that wants to steal from you. There's so many different stories, so many different things that you can do. Yes, let's summon the priest to protect us because remember, the devil is in the details. <laughs> nice, Rogue 13. <laughs> All right, so we'll just take a little power nap here while this is saving and then I'm gonna wake up and we'll get started. All right, once it's finished saving, yeah. I am excited to continue this. We have about 15 minutes left, so I'm gonna quickly power through the details and then add some filters. All right, sweet. All right. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna switch this ladder, of course, over to this side over here. There we go, that looks nice. So that's the way to get there. Instead of just boom, boom, all the way across, you have to go to those alleyways and that's nice. Now that I've got that, set up we can go ahead and start adding details so of course the number one thing for details for me is if you're stump on what details to add crates and barrels let me tell you something right now crates and barrels are going to be basically you know the stock item that you're going to be using <laughs> to uh pretty much use your details so now when you want to figure out where you're going to put crates and barrels you got to think about the functionality of the map so when i think about crates, when I think about food and the different things that are on the crates and barrels, I generally think about maybe a market stall that's gonna have goods, it's gonna have crates. You're gonna find some on boats. You're gonna find them on the docks. You're gonna find them probably in the back alleyways. Okay, so lots of different places. And the way that I'm gonna choose to scale this is to see if it can fit inside of the wheelbarrow. So this is a huge, 
huge box or a huge crate. We can make it about, ooh, let's, I kind of think that 41 looks good. Let me just put it back into the crate or back into uh, the wheelbarrow. Let's push it up a layer. There we go. So we got that in the wheelbarrow. So now that I've set that, this is the general scale I'll be going with. Now crates and crates and barrels are going to vary in size, of course, but that's probably the largest crate you're going to find on the map because it just barely fits inside of there. So we can put a couple alongside here. Don't forget, you're going to want to show the wares and goods as well. I'm also going to want to make sure that I add in a object shadow as well. That's going to be thick enough to where you can kind of look like it is standing off the map. So let's go ahead and throw in the intensity here. Increase the blur. There we go. Now I'm going to put that right against there and you'll be able to see that there's that nice object shadow that makes it look like it pops out. Okay, let's go back into our crates and barrels section. I'm going to expand all so I see my options. So we're at a shipyard or dockyard. So expect some fish, right? So let's throw in some fish. Now I don't want blue against the blue here. So what I'll do instead is rescale it, make it a little bit bigger than the other crates and barrels. And I'm gonna go ahead and place it below like this. And I'm gonna make sure it's below that market, right? Stall, there we go. Let's add maybe another one on this side over here, right there. I'm gonna put it right in here and this will look good. Let's throw in one more. You can expect a lot of fish in a dockyard, right? You would just kind of expect that. So let's rescale this down, put this one on top inside of the barrel here. Perfect. All right. Oopsie, I didn't put that on top. My bad. Let's go up a layer. Looks like I'm going to have to do a stream on layers too. All right. I do have a great layer guide though. It's just a visual that you can check out and that guide will help you with how layers work. All right, so we've added in some crates and some barrels. That looks good, or crates. We haven't added any barrels yet, but we're going to do that. Don't worry. Let's go uh, in some more seafood. And I'm going to use this red against uh, that pink against that blue. So that way it pops out, really, really pops out a lot because I'm not making them the same color, right? If my goods are kind of a reddish meat color and my uh, tent is red, they're going to blur together a little bit, but if you use like a cool color against a warm color, they'll pop out a little bit more. And that's always nice to do. So remember, just a little, learn a little bit about color theory, learn about complementary colors and things like that. It'll be really helpful in overall your compositions. And if you want, we can go over color theory in a stream. That might be uh, kind of an interesting stream. Maybe that'll help out some, some people. Let me know if that interests you and we can do that. Because color theory is a lot of fun. Really interesting stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and throw in a couple more details. I'm gonna throw in some barrels here. I'm gonna end up putting some um, marks on the road. Oh, there's tons of food right here, this is perfect. I'll go ahead and use this one, red against this blue here. Again, that should look nice. Let's also throw in this green one right here. That should look good. More food, lots of food. Uh, let's go ahead and now throw in our barrels and our crates or our barrels. Let's go ahead and pick a couple places. We do want to put some maybe alongside here. I'm going to stack some crates as well. We'll get to that and I'll, or barrels. And I'll show you a neat trick that I like to use when stacking things. So the first thing, let's go ahead and fix the shadows for this barrels here. So you, let's just say you want to do a stack of three barrels. Okay. One, put another one, right? Oopsie. Let's not do the random. Let's do this instead. Two, one right there and let's put another one on top and you're going to go up a layer okay so the ones the one way that you can show depth like i said earlier was contrast so i'm going to select the two barrels underneath and i'm going to go ahead the advanced settings and bring the brightness down just a little bit and what you see is is that the the barrel on top is brighter and it makes it look like it pops out it makes it look like it's on top of those two barrels because those two barrels are darker than the third barrel on top so remember that trick contrast is how you allow things to pop out just remember that trick it's super important okay and these barrels are rather kind of large so i can just bring them down a little bit too if i want and i want to put it maybe underneath like this so it looks like there's an illusion of depth so always do overlapping if you want depth how is it that i make it look like 
this building is taller than this market stall, put it underneath it, let the shadow pop on top of it, and it makes it look like the building is on top or taller than that market. So just remember those tricks if you want to create depth. Okay, now we've done a lot of kind of decorating here on this side. Let's go move over to the right side where the ship is. Let's go ahead and throw in a couple things. First, I'm going to want to throw in that object shadow. Make sure that it's the right size because I want it to pop out against the ocean. So as always, just use that shadow. I'm going to boost the intensity and already it looks like it's popped up and going above the water. Okay, so that works out great. Now, one of the things that I want to do is I want to also create maybe some boards to make it look like this is how you get across. So let's maybe throw in a board that goes across. Let me switch over to object. Go to zero here. And I'm going to put a couple boards going across that lead onto the dock. Because how is it they're getting across? Are they just jumping across? Well, we can throw in some boards here to make it look like you just go right across these boards here to get in. I'm going to flip and rotate it as well. And I might even move it a little bit further away from the ramp. Well, I think that works good. So this is pretty much the ramp that goes across to the boats that go on to there. So very helpful. So now we can go across there. Let's take a step back and see where we're at. Yeah, things are looking good. We're doing all right so far. All right. Let's go ahead and also throw in maybe a crane. A crane might be nice, right? So I'll type in a crane. You might expect some kind of crane lifting up the heavier materials from the boat onto the dock and into the, into the crate. So let me just make sure that I have the length right, right about there. And then I can rotate it like this. Let's put it right about there. I just wanna verify that I get the length right. And you picking up some, we can put some crates right underneath that area right there to make it look like it is just going from that barrel or whatever goods or services or whatever it is are gonna be on this boat are moved over to uh, this cart right here. I'm having a brain fart right now. <laughs> <sighs> Love it. <laughs> okay. Why are we at for time? Ooh, eight more minutes. Oh, I better boost this up. Keep going. I'm being a slow poke. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that crane looks like it is popping out a little bit. Good. Perfect. I can put down also a crate right here. Let me bring the sides down. Take it down one. And I'm also going to put, I think I need to bring the crane up. Crane is higher up than the crate, so you go up a layer, then I can select that crate, push it up a layer, there you go, perfect. All right, oops, I don't like the way that is lined up with that, so we'll change it this way. There you go, and it's a little too big. There we go, I want it to be big enough to where it fits inside of those cards. Perfect, there we go, so you got some stuff there, and I can throw in a couple more as well if I wanted to. Just throw a couple more crates, barrels, and stuff on here because you would expect a lot of goods on this sailing ship. Let's also switch to random stamp as well. Perfect. I don't want anything blocking the walkway, so I'll just put these away from that piece of wood right there that's going across, and I'll just put this, put some randomly right here. And, you know, remember that same trick of stacking things. So if you want to put one right there and you want to put another one on top of that, rotate it like that and of course just drop the brightness of whatever is being stacked so whatever's below just change that brightness just a little bit and it's going to make that top one pop out okay just remember that trick super helpful all right so pretty simple stuff so far um I'm, let me just take a look here i'm going to zoom out save well saving takes a minute so <laughs> i'm not going to waste my time saving let's go ahead and add in some wheel ruts I'll show you a really cool trick that I like to use to make wheel ruts. So at first, I'm going to put down one path, okay? We're going to use the path to show wheel ruts. So I'll go ahead and say that mm, maybe we want to have a little bit of dirt color. Let's go with orange, maybe a little bit darker. This color will turn off our shadow. We don't really need that. And I can also turn on that blur. And then the last step is to change the layer. So I could change it to maybe overlay might work good. And let's change the opacity down. That looks good. Let's also change the, the width. There we go, perfect. 
Okay, so now from there, I can go in and zoom out, use that path, make sure the paths, I'm gonna set them to the layer negative five so I don't accidentally go over anything. So I'll start with the current one right here. And what you're gonna do is you're not going to make the perfect line first. You're gonna just put a couple down like this. Okay, there you go. And we're, now what's beautiful about this is you can change, you can change the, the opacity, the blur, all that stuff, so that that way, uh, when you're doing it, it doesn't all look the same. Let me so let me bring it down even. Let's bring it down even more. There we go. So you can just barely see it. Perfect. So some maybe some f recent tracks and some not so recent tracks. Let's go like this. Let's even put some going across over here like this. So we're kind of creating these wheel ruts. This is nice. There we go. All right. So it just kind of shows a little bit of dirt. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the grid now. I think we've established the scale. So now you can kind of take a look at it without the grid on it. Doesn't look too bad. I'm going to save. And then we're going to do just a little bit more. I'm going to quickly do some texturing. I'm going to add in maybe some trees off to the left side. And I might do a little bit of painting in the ocean on the right side. And then we'll throw on some filters, okay? All right. This is where my power nap kicks in. <laughs> hey, now don't forget everybody, starting next week or this month, uh, we're gonna be changing over our schedule. So instead of 10 a.m. PST on Wednesdays, it's gonna be 3 p.m. PST. So about a five hour difference. Okay, we're gonna just doing this to change up, to see if our viewership changes or not, to see what works best for the majority of our users. Just remember, it doesn't matter when we really record it, uh, but the stream, we will still upload this to YouTube the same day. And that takes about two hours to upload, to do the whole processing and uploading and everything. So just expect, if you miss the stream, don't worry about that. We add it to YouTube, just give it a couple hours after the stream and it will be loaded up, okay? And of course, I also add the link in our Discord server. If you aren't with our Discord server, you should totally join. We have the best moderators. We have the best community. Everyone's really helpful. It's fantastic. So go check that out. There is a uh, stream guide channel that will show you, give you suggestions about what kind of streams you want to see. And there's also another channel um, that will also help you. It's called uh, Having a brain fart here while trying to save. What? Is, oh, hold on a second. Quick question. Hey, Ross newbie, first time chat. Uh, hold on a second. Good question. Uh, I can't actually answer that question right now. Okay. Oh, oh, modern assets. Mm, uh, well, I think that's a great idea. If you go to our Discord server, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, we do have a art request channel, and in that channel, you can request modern. Stamps. Now, I do believe there's already a request for that, so don't put a new one down. Just go in and uh, find the current request and just give it a thumbs up because the more thumbs up to a request, the more likely the artist will probably address it, okay? And yeah, modern, modern assets would be awesome. I totally agree. Sick. Okay, let's quickly just do some painting. I have this darker texture here, and I'm going to go ahead and paint the BG layer. Bring the softness all the way up. And I'm gonna quickly just paint. Oh, don't be scared, Shirad. Shirad, it's not scary at all. We are really friendly. Everyone is super friendly, trust me. Everyone is super friendly. So when you're painting water, just know that the darker the water is, the generally the deeper it is because it's harder for the, for the light to penetrate, right? So what I'm doing is creating a, an illusion of deeper or deeper water by just making it a little bit darker. That's all. Oh, and I do see a little bit of a blip right here. Not sure what that is, <laughs> but just remember darker water means deeper water. Lighter water means shallower water. Okay. Just a, just a, a little kind of guide to help you out there with that. I'm also going to rotate this ship just a little bit. It's always nice to uh, randomly rotate things just a little bit to create the illusion of use wear and tear and stuff like that. So it's always nice to just maybe rotate a couple docks in a kind of a random weird way. Just, just rotate them a couple degrees like this. And what you're doing is kind of creating the illusion of wear and tear by moving the boat and having it rotated just a little bit this way to the side and not perfectly straight. 
gives it the feeling of use, wear and tear. All those things are super, super helpful when you want to create this sense of realism on your map because there's going to be wear and tear. There's going to be things out of place. Over time, walls, they get manipulated as the earth shifts and moves. So not everything's going to be perfectly straight. Sometimes walls are going to be a little bent. Sometimes a dock is going to be a little warped from water being on it and the sun drying it, re-warping it and reshaping it over time. So don't expect everything to be perfectly lined up. Have a little bit of random rotation to some of your things to kind of create that sense of wear and tear and time affecting your map, right? Now that we've done that darker part, we can go down probably and put in a couple trees. And I think it would be nice to maybe throw in a tree somewhere because it's nice to throw in a little bit of vegetation. It's always nice to have a little bit of vegetation when you're making your map. So what I might do is just take a tree and maybe put one uh, like right here on the side in this corner right here. You can put another one maybe right here in this corner. You can put another one right here if you want. Lots of different options. Just make sure it's set above. Your tree is gonna be generally probably a little bit higher up, but throwing in a little bit of greenery is always nice because you would expect a little bit of green, maybe some grasses. A little bit of that really helps to give you some re a sense of realism, right? Unless it's a purely industrial-like area, then yeah, having a little bit of vegetation is really, really helpful. So it's nice to maybe throw down some vines on top of the roof, to put some vines maybe lining along some of the retaining walls. So if I type in vines like this, throwing in a little bit of vegetation will be nice. And don't forget, green and red are complementary colors. So by throwing down some green on top of these red, this red roof right here will also give it a nice kind of feel to it. So I'll throw in just a little bit of vine work on this roof here. And the way that I go about doing it is, is I try to cluster them together because they are gonna stay in one place. I try not to cover the whole thing. Just put in a couple, so there's some there, and I can put maybe a couple more over here as well. Let's put this down right here. Uh, let's put one right. Going maybe all the way across and then one more going down, I think should look good. Let's put one right, ooh, right here should look good. All right, so now you have some kind of vegetation. Remember that green looks good. Red and green are complementary colors, so they work very well together. Now we also wanna put some stuff in the alleyway here, some crates and some barrels and stuff. It's always nice to have a little bit of something there. And of course you can reset, res resize it if you feel that you want more space in that alleyway, totally up to you. Okay, let's go put maybe that crate right there. We'll put it below, of course. Go down a layer, I want it below. There we go. Put a little bit more this way. Okay, all right. I think that looks good. So you've got those alleyways, this looks good. All right, let me just take a step back. Just see how everything looks. Make sure that it looks right. Make sure that I have everything that a player might need. Markets for getting food. These buildings could be an inn or a merchant of some kind. It really just depends what your characters are going to be doing, what the quest is. Are they coming to port to meet with somebody? Are they leaving? Are they getting on the boat? That's le Are they coming in? So lots of different things. Always think about those kind of things when you're putting it all together. Now, the last step, of course, is to throw in filters. So I'm gonna throw in a couple filters and there are a couple that are really helpful. One is to throw down clarity. Clarity is gonna cause everything to pop out. So if I turn that filter off, you'll notice that it's not quite as dark. The clarity kind of makes the things pop out. Now, you might want the colors to maybe fit together better. Maybe you want, uh, there's just too much color and you want them to blend together. Using some kind of color filter can help to make things kind of blend in together better. So if I want to, I can go ahead and turn off this cool warm. And you'll notice that overall, when I turn that filter on, it kind of adds a little bit of purple to it, allowing all the stamps to kind of blend and mesh together better. That's what these color filters are really for. It's to set a mood or to make kind of stamps come together well, all right? 
Now, after I use that, I also like to throw down a little more extra texturing. I mentioned this in this last stream, that sometimes you don't want to do all this extra texturing. So what's really, really helpful to add artifacts on your map is to go to that texture filter, open up that catalog, and then go, we're going to go ahead and search all styles. And we're going to open up. Once I search all styles, check that last, pan, last panel, that left panel there, and it's going to show you all the different filters from the various styles. So you do have to click this search all styles toggle first. Give that a moment to boot up. Parchment world. Click parchment world. You're going to see this old paper filter. Now you're going to have to change the blend mode. And the reason why is because if this particular filter is not a default of this style, which is that fantasy battle maps style. So you have to change the settings. Overlay is really the best setting right here. Now I've set it to overlay. Let me turn that off real quick so you can kind of see. Now you see what this texture did is it added a heck of a lot more texture to the whole map, giving it a more grungier, dirty look, but also adds that nice texture in. And this way you don't have to do all that painting because really you don't want to spend three hours painting your BG and FG layers to make it look nice to get the extra artifacts that you want in it. That is what filters are for. Remember, let the tool do the work for you. Don't spend two hours doing all this texturing when the filter tool can do it for you, okay? Some other nice things to add in is also to add in a vignette. This can be really, adding a vignette filter can be really helpful for focusing on the center of the map because it's using that vignette. So if I click vignette like this, okay. Now it's hard to see at first, but what it did is it's putting in this darker corners and it's making the center pop out more. Let me go to that vignette real quick and I'll turn it off so you can kind of see what it looks like, what the difference is without it. So if I turn off the vignette, you see those corners got bright again. So a vignette is very helpful to making the center of your map pop out, which makes total sense. And I do kind of like the shadow further out because it darkens the ocean and the deeper parts as you would expect. And it also adds darker corners on the land where the back alleyway is. And I would expect shadows and a little bit of darkness to also be in that alleyway. So extremely helpful to using filters to help you out in that way. Let's go ahead and save. And I think that should be it. Now, after this is done saving, I'll go ahead and quickly review the calendar for next month, and then I'll call it good. Don't forget, this will be on YouTube in about roughly about two hours or so. Just takes a moment for it to process and for it to load and get uploaded to YouTube. Now, I think next time, though, I'll do a little bit more. I'll try to include the names of everything. I'm really glad that Rogue 13 included all that stuff. So I probably should have done a little bit more uh, research, but I, I think knowing the names of everything is what a quay is, knowing what a pier is, a dock is basically a pier. Uh, you also have that quay, which is that the side where these kind of markets parts are. So there are some terminologies uh, that I didn't include in here. I totally recommend that you research it. And in the next stream, I'll make sure to include the terminology so you don't have to. <laughs> So once this is done saving, we'll go over September stream schedule, tell you what's coming up. I'm excited for it. Got a couple surprises, got some fun stuff coming up. Super excited about it. Don't forget 3 p.m. PST is when our new stream schedule is going to be. I'm super excited about that. Just take a quick little power nap here while it's saving. <laughs> Awesome. When you have all these filters, when you have all these filters on and stuff like that, and you're using a lot of layer shadows, it can be a little laggy. I'm also using OBS, so I'm using an open broadcast system as well, and that also causes a little bit of lag. If you ever experience lag, just make sure to check your firewalls and to check incognito mode to see if there are any firewalls or browser extensions that might be causing lag. Make sure to also have no other tabs 
uh, open as well because remember this is a web-based tool more tabs it means more resources so just leave it to one tab don't have more than one incarnate tab open at a time i also recommend that and of course just save and refresh because whenever you refresh you're refreshing that history a little bit and kind of clearing up some space for the map all right so always remember to save your map and refresh i go about 100 changes or so i do want to show just one more cool little trick i forgot to mention this but one last thing that you can do that's really interesting that you might like is that you can create the illusion of larger stones by changing the size real quick i forgot to show this trick and i want to show it to you because it's super cool but you can create some really interesting ideas by creating some larger stones like this and just randomly push here and you can get some larger stones and what this kind of does is it kind of creates this nice illusion of some spots have larger stones some have smaller ones these might be a little too big but you get the general idea throwing in just increasing the size and then throwing them down has a nice look and it destroys some of the repetitiveness of those stones and that looks kind of nice okay let's go quickly go over our schedule and then we're going to call it good I'm not going to save it. I just wanted to show you that trick real quick. Let's go back and we're going to go over that schedule. Yeah, thank you everyone. It was a great stream. I appreciate everyone's help in it. So let's just go over this uh, next month's stream schedule real quick. So next week, Wednesday the 7th, we're going to be doing understanding groups. I know some people struggle with understanding how groups operate uh, and understanding the layering that goes with that. So in this stream, we're going to be showing you how to make composite stamps with groups, how to group them properly, how to label them, everything that's involved with groups we're going to be covering. We're also going to be doing a how to create fantasy world biomes on the 14th. I'm excited about that one. We're going to be doing how to create your own map style as well. Sometimes a lot of you might be private contractors. You're trying to make your daily bread by selling uh, your maps to DMs on Pinterest, not Pinterest, but on Patreon. So you're using Instagram and these other things. One way to make your maps pop out from other people is to develop your own map style so that that way they'll get more visibility. If your map pops out from other maps, for instance, let's say on the explore page, that one's going to get looked at more. So this stream is going to be helping you to develop your own style to make those maps pop out giving you more visibility and more revenue for you that last stream is going to be on the 28th and it's going to be how to create top down rpg maps this is going to be kind of a fun stream where i'm just going to be showing you how to make those classic you know 12 bit some of those classic uh rpg fantasy rpgs from like the 1990s we're talking like playstation one just the classic rpgs or what a lot of indie games make today so that'll be a really fun stream and i'm excited to show you that so that is the stream schedule i hope to see you at all at the streams i'm particularly excited for groups so i am looking forward to seeing you all on the 7th of next week please stay safe and healthy and merry map making my friends i will see you all very very soon take care now okay